Hi, everyone. This is a presentation for PKC 2022. I'm Charlotte Lefebvre, and it is work in collaboration with Pierre Cartman. And the paper is named Time Memory Trade-offs for Large White Syndrome Decoding Internary Codes. So I will first start with a few definitions and the motivation of our work. In this work, we will be always in a ternary setting and consider linear codes, where n denotes the code length and k the dimension. We will study a particular instance of the fixed weight syndrome decoding problem. The fixed weight syndrome decoding problem takes as input a rectangular matrix full rank, also called the parity check matrix, then a vector called the syndrome, and an integer called the weight. The aim is to solve the linear system HE equals S, where there is a constraint on the Hamming weight of the solution. We will restrict ourselves in a case where the parity check matrix and the syndrome are assumed to be both sample uniformly at random, and the code rates and weight rates are both fixed. In particular, we will be in a setting where there are many solutions to this problem, exponential in the code length, yet the search space is comparatively huge, making thus this problem hard. The main motivation of our work is the wave signature scheme introduced by Debré Alazar et al. in 2018. Its high-level view is quite classical in code-based crypto. The private key is a structural parity check matrix, and the public key is a random obfuscation of the latter, making it indistinguishable from a random parity check matrix. Next, the signature of the message consists of solving a syndrome decoding instance where the parity check matrix is the public key, the syndrome is the hash of the message, and the relative weight is fixed by the scheme. In particular, we are in a high weight regime. The knowledge of the private key provides a trapdoor that makes the syndrome decoding problem much easier. On the other side, we must ensure that anyone with only access to the public key cannot produce valid signatures. Therefore, one needs to ensure that the underlying syndrome decoding problem must be computationally intractable. So to give a global picture of the state of the art with respect to the syndrome decoding problem, this problem is easy for a certain weight range. In other words, a polynomial algorithm in the code length was formed by French. Outside of this interval, no polynomial algorithm is known, so the problem is believed to be hard. In particular, the weight used in wave signature scheme is in the hard zone, but this is far away from the gilbert varshamov bound. Now that this is said, to ensure that the syndrome decoding problem in wave signature scheme is intractable for an adversary, one needs to know about the best possible attacks at this particular weight. And this has been studied by Bricot et al. in 2019. They used the PG plus SS framework instantiated with a combination of the K3 and the representation technique. And the cost that they derived is given here. However, this cost is in time and in memory. Making it, making it unattractive in some applications. That's why we propose in this work to study the time memory trade-offs for this problem. So to do this, we just started the same way as Bricot et al. and used the PG plus SS framework, which stands for partial Gaussian elimination plus subset sum. This framework has been formalized by them, and this is a modular description of what most ISD-based algorithms do. Here, we won't present the framework in all of its generality since we fixed some parameters. The first step in the framework consists of doing a partial Gaussian elimination on some rows of the parity check matrix. And the number of rows is parameterized by a quantity called L. This is an input to, the, to this framework. Then we split the syndrome and the candidate solution according to this division. The next step is to solve a smaller problem, which is a sort of syndrome decoding problem. And the parity check matrix is given by H2, the syndrome S2, in particular, it has L coordinates, and the solution E2 will have K plus L coordinates. We require that it is full weight. And one important difference with the syndrome decoding problem is that we, here we ask for many solutions. And the idea is that for every E2 solution of the previous problem, there exists a unique vector E1, such that the concatenation of both vectors give a solution to the linear system. In particular, we solve the syndrome decoding problem if and only if the Hamming weight of the concatenation is W. And here it translates on the, on the condition on the Hamming weight of E1. The desired number of solutions at the step number two is in particular the inverse of the probability that E1 gets the right Hamming weight. 
So this framework allowed us to transform the problem into a slightly different one. So in other words, find many solutions to a smaller sub-syndrome decoding problem. As pointed by Brigud et al, this problem reduces in reality to the subset sum problem. Moreover, asking for many solutions opened the way to several optimization. And in particular, we can require that solution are written in constant amortized time. To go back on this L parameter, this is a quite important parameter. So from now, we denote by SL the desired number of solutions to the small sub problem. What is interesting here is that when L increases, the size of S2 is going to increase. Thus, the problem becomes harder. But on the other side, the requirements on the Hamming weight of E1 is going to be much easier to satisfy. So concretely, it means that the desired number of solutions is going to decrease. So this is what we can see uh, on the first stage of this curve that um, plots the logarithm of L cell according to L. So this L parameter will be central in our trade-offs since one L parameter plus a fixed algorithm to solve the smaller problem can provide us one trade-off. And usually the memory consumption is going to increase along with L parameter. So this particular plot was done by fixing a code length in the wave regime. Note that L equal to zero corresponds to French algorithm, which is memoryless. And Brickett et al uh, chose the following L parameters, and it, and it could provide them solution. It was able to provide them solutions in constant amortized time. And in no case, we are going to explore uh, the L parameter between these two quantities. We are now going to see how can we transform the sub problem into an all list sum problem. From now, I'm going to drop the two index notation so that now we want to solve HE equal to S with E full weight. We are going to use algorithm solving the early sum problem, also called the generalized birthday problem. So this generalized birthday problem takes as input all list, each list containing vector. And the aim is to find one element in each list such that the sum of all of these elements give the null vector. The syndrome decoding problem can, de can be transformed into an all list problem by doing the following. So first, we split the evenly the parity check matrix columns into our slices. We do the same for the candidate solution. And now the linear system HE equals S can be rewritten as follow. So now the list LI is going to contain full weight linear combinations of columns of HI, unless the last list which uh, will also have uh, the syndrome subtracted. So this is quite a classical approach and was for instance used by Bricot et al in their work. So here, even despite the partial Gaussian elimination done within the PG plus SS framework, we will be still in a setting where the desired number of solution is smaller than the total expected number of solution to the sub syndrome decoding problem here. Therefore, in particular, we are not obliged to consider all possible full weight linear combinations in each list. Thus, we have some freedom on the size of the list. However, on the other side, we cannot have lists as large as we want because in particular, each list contains full weight linear combination of K plus L over R columns of a matrix. So it cannot be as large as we want. And this is exactly what this constraint translates. To solve the underlying all list sum problem, we are going to use algorithms and all of them enumerate smartly a fraction of the solutions. We have some freedom on the number of lists the size of the syndrome, and to a certain extent, the size of the list. So here are the algorithms that we consider. The dissection and the K3 algorithm can be seen as improvements of the meet in the middle algorithm. And this is also possible to hybrid them in what we will call here dissection in tree. And this is the uh, algorithm that will provide us our best instances. <clears throat> the algorithm presented here are able to return solutions to the early sum problem in constant amortized time. So with respect to time course, we could first think that this is optimal. However, sometimes the algorithm returns too much solution uh, compared to the number of solutions that we want, so that the amortized cost regime works only when we require at least a certain number of solutions. And, in, and if this is not satisfied, this yields a loss. That's why we introduce the notion of granularity 
and it's going to help us to assess if an algorithm is adapted with respect to this quantity. The granularity is simply the smallest number of solutions that an algorithm can return while not changing its amortized cost. Looking ahead, the dissection is an algorithm which is very memory friendly, which has on the other side a granularity not adapted for many L parameters. And concretely, it will only give interesting instances for small L parameter that corresponds to quite extreme trade-offs. In this work, we spent a significant time trying to lower the granularity of some of this algorithm when it is too coarse. Now I'm going to present the different algorithms and we'll start with the K tree. The K tree was introduced by Wagner in 2002. So for simplicity, we require that the number of lists is a power of two, so two to the A, where A denotes the number of levels. So here is the example of a K tree with R equals eight, so that the number of levels is three. The target is split evenly into three slices and that each level a meet in the middle algorithm is applied with one slice of the target. In our case, the tree is balanced so that the number of written solution after each, each merging is expected to be equal to the initial list size. We can see that one solution written by this tree is highly structured since you require, for instance, that the first two elements in L1 and in L2 sum on zero on L over three coordinates by construction. Therefore, the K3 decimates the solutions. But this is not a problem in our case, since once again, we do not want all of the solution. So it's even an advantage and even better than that, because decimating the solution will give an algorithm with a fine granularity. And if we want more solution, we can just iterate this tree using different intermediate targets. So for example, here we can take an arbitrary vector t instead of the zero target, and here replace this zero by minus t. Now, given the constraint that we want solution in constant amortized time for fixed L and A parameters, there exists an optimal choice for the least size in the sense that it will minimize both the granularity and the memory consumption. And both quantities are asymptotically equal to three to the L of A. Therefore, given one fixed L, one wants to have a number of levels as large as possible. But this quantity is limited because of the constraint on the list type that we mentioned earlier. So it limits, it limits the maximal number of levels that we can use given one fixed L parameter. Here are the trade-offs offered by the K3 algorithm. On y-axis, this is the logarithm of the time cost divided by the codelet, and on x-axis, the same for the memory cost. This diamond points is the cost that Bricot et al. found. In particular, they use the smooth K3 algorithm that I'll mention in a slide, combined with the representation technique that uh, I won't present here. So going back to the K3 graph here, one point represents the application of the K3 with one L parameters and the values of L are increasing from left to right. Noteworthy is that this graph is made out of several lines. In fact, one line represents the K tree with one fixed number of levels. For each line, take for example the orange line, it corresponds to six levels, and the rightest point is the largest L parameter, such that we can use the K tree with six levels. So for any larger L parameter, this constraint is no more satisfied. Therefore, the number of levels needs to be decreased. Since in no case, decreasing the number of levels leads to a larger memory consumption, this explains why we have some gaps um, in the memory consumption between when we change uh, the number of levels. In fact, there exists a way to obtain a smooth graph with slightly better trade-offs. This is given by the extended K3 algorithm presented by Minder and Sinclair and adapted in the ternary setting by Bricot et al. I won't go into the details, but the raw idea is that the merging at the first level is unbalanced and partially dedicated to increase the list size. And concretely, it allows to add one more level than what the constraint on the list size dictated. As we can see on this graph, it provides us a smooth curve and better results than the K3. So now I will mention the dissection framework that we explored in this work too. 
Uh, it was introduced by Dean et al. in 2012 and is another generalization of the meet in the middle algorithm. I won't present the inner working of the dissection, but rather the key ideas. So it's a memory friendly family of algorithm that was designed initially to be exhaustive, so return all of the possible solutions. But it is still possible to not return them all and uh, have um, and adapt slightly the granularity. But the, the overall granularity is going to remain somehow coarse. Some trade offs are possible with the choice of the initial list size, but there are only a few choices that provide solution in constant amortized time. And contrary to the K3, where the problem is split in a symmetric way, the dissection decomposes the early sum problem into a small one and a large one. The smaller problem has its solution stored in memory, while the large one has its solution written on the fly. And this decomposition can be done recursively within the dissection framework. Now I will present the possible trade-offs. On this plot, the red points represent the trade-off offered by R dissection with R smaller than 400. We did not increase R any further, and it would only add more points in this zone of the graph that corresponds to quite extreme trade-offs. This graph was drawn using one single L parameter fixed to 0 .0, 0.04 times n. This gray horizontal line represents the desired number of solutions for this particular L. And, in the, disse and the dissection curve does not reach it. So it means that it cannot return the desired number of solutions in constant amortized time. And the reason for that is that the dissection has a granularity which is not adapted here. And this is true for a quite large range of L parameters. In general, the dissection matches the desired number of solutions only for very small L values. So we tried to lower the granularity of the dissection and it gives us the uh, following black dots, but it gives only a very small improvement. One last remark on this graph is that after a certain point, uh, it, there is a little interest in increasing uh, further the memory because increasing further the memory would only uh, give a small gain in the time cost. Now that this is said, we would like to extract the best trade-offs by varying L parameters. And it gives the following plot where each color represents the dissection plot uh, for one L parameter. To obtain only the interesting points, we can extract the outline of the curve and obtain then this figure. And we can now compare the dissection trade-offs to the ones of the K3. So the dissection outperforms the K3 algorithm for small memories. It is meaningful since in this zone, the dissection granularity usually matches the desired number of solutions. And we can thus benefit from the memory friendliness of the dissection. On the contrary, the K3 is less memory efficient, yet its granularity is not limiting up to large L values. So, so far, we have seen two generalizations of the meet in the middle, which show by instance very different. Then one possibility is to consider a hybrid version that somehow combines the ID of both algorithm that we will call here dissection in tree. It's an algorithm presented by Dinner in 2019. And the idea here is that the lists are merged in a tree structure, just like with the K tree, but instead of applying the meet in the middle on couples of lists, now a X dissection is applied on listables. So here is the example of uh, one of the dissection, dissection in tree that gave us our best results. It is a tree with three levels and each dissection done is a full dissection. At the moment, we impose that every dissection done is exhaustive and still require that solutions are returned in constant amortized time. And we shall not forget uh, the constraint on the initial list size. In fact, I didn't mention this before, but the four dissection is the base case in the dissection framework. And this is the only one which is symmetric. In particular, this is just an exhaustive variant of the K tree. Therefore, if we unfold in this tree, what happens within the four dissection, we obtain a tree that has exactly the same structure as the one of the K tree with six levels. So we might wonder what's the difference between these two algorithms. One of the main difference between them is in the merging strategy. The K3 decimates solution in a somehow steady way, while the dissection in tree is locally exhaustive. 
So on this plot, the round point represents the trade-offs with the dissection in tree and the square ones with the K-tree. Additionally, there is here a color scale that represents the value of the underlying L parameters used for every point. Unless for this particular part of the curve that I will um, mention in a moment, one horizontal line gives two points with the same L values, in particular, the same target size and the same time cost. So now this is clear that the dissection in tree outperforms the K-tree since it has a smaller memory consumption. One possible explanation is that the layer dissection is going to return much less structured solution. Thus, it can explore more candidate solution within the list. But on the other side, uh, for amortized cost reason, the dissection in tree is going to return also much more solutions than the K-tree. Yet, in this case, the memory consumption is still better. And because the memory consumption is lower, there are more L values such that we can apply this dissection in tree because the constraints on the, on the list size limits the memory up to this particular value. One downside with the layer dissection is that it has a coarser granularity. With the K3, the granularity was given by the initial list size, while for the dissection in tree, the granularity is the square of the list size. We can see that granularity problems appear exactly at this trade-off, T equals M square. And from this, po this point, one iteration of the layer disse of the dissection in tree is going to return too much solutions. So that's why, in particular, the curve rebounds. The bottleneck in the granularity was because of the dissection granularity. So that's why, to solve these granularity problems, we considered non-exhaustive dissection so that its granularity matches exactly the number of desired solution. In particular, by doing that, we decimate the solution quite rapidly so that the memory efficiency decreases. It gave us the extra points in brown, and we see the loss uh, in the slope of the curve. In the case of the four dissection with three levels, by doing that, we go back gradually to what does a classical K3 do when we increase the memory consumption. But in this case, what stops the curve is the constraint on the list size. One natural idea to extend the plot is then to apply the smoothing technique on top of that. And it gave us the following green points. Unsurprisingly, the rightmost point corresponds, in fact, to the smooth K tree with six levels. So at this particular point, the four dissection is just a four tree without any repetition of the tree with intermediate targets. So now let's see a summary of our results. This is a table with the asymptotic cost given several trade-offs. The first line corresponds to the cost formed by Bricot et al. with time equals memory. We can see that when the memory consumption relative to the time decreases, it is more interesting to consider larger dissections. Not worthy is that the product memory time, which can be helpful as a tool to compare different trade-offs, is smaller with all trade-offs. And we can see all of the results plotted on this graph. Here, this is clear that the dissection in, in gray and the K3 in black are outperformed by layer dissection. For small memories, globally, what works best is the dissection with two levels, while for larger memory, we should rather use a full dissection with three or four levels. In this plot, the cost computed is asymptotic, and many quantities were not taken into account. For example, the factors when doing operation in F3 to the N and the polynomial factors in the cost estimates were omitted. So we refine the estimate of the cost by taking these quantities into account. The idea here is to have a sort of intermediate cost between the asymptotic ones and the full and accurate modeling of the attack. Here is the plot that we derived using the wave signature scheme parameters. In particular, lots of graphs disappeared here because uh, these factors made them uninteresting to use. For example, the four dissection with four levels becomes always less interesting than the four dissection with three levels. Now to conclude, in this work, we investigated time memory trade-offs for a particular instance of the syndrome decoding problem underlying wave signature scheme security. To do that, we used the PG plus SS framework and instantiated it with the K3 dissection and dissection in tree. We spent a significant time trying to decrease the granularity of the building blocks so that it matched 
it matched the desired number of solutions in our case. So this is all for this presentation. I hope that you enjoy it and I wish you a nice day.